Also, now I know I need to change all my passwords. Capital P, password123, password yeah, dollar sign doesn't work. It's spent. So... We have an interesting topic for today. Um, we have a lot of acronyms on this podcast, a lot of acronyms in IT in general, and we get to get to the bottom of one of those. Um, that is MFA. That's something that a lot of people have heard or seen. Um, but the topic for today in the form of a question is, what is MFA? It's a good question because it's a very important technology. So MFA stands for multi-factor authentication. What that means is that you are authenticating, you are uh, you, in multiple ways, right? So it increases the confidence level uh, that, y- that you are, in fact, who you say you are, and it's for security. Um, one factor of authentication that everybody's familiar with is a username and a password. So that would be like single factor authentication. Multi-factor would be that we're adding, in addition to your username and password, we're adding another piece of data that confirms that you are who you are. Um, there's, there's three primary factors. There's actually a couple more that you can use. Um, I think there's like a total of five factors available. But really, realistically speaking, there's three factors that people use in business to authenticate who they are. And, I, and I'd be happy to go down uh, uh, that topic and that, that uh, rabbit hole, but um, I figured I'd see if you had another question before I go there. <laughs> Appreciate that. There's a lot of questions have popped up from there. So um, we know what, what MFA stands for, multi-factor authentication. Um, now, and, and also that multi, you've already answered the question that that can be more than two it can be, um, several things up, up to five or, 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 or six, I believe is what you were saying. Now, what does it do? What exactly is it? Okay. So, and uh, let me cover this too, cause you said it can be more than two. There's also two factor authentication. A lot of people use that term. It's the same thing. Two factor just means you you have two. Uh, again, it's multi factor. So I want to make that point clear to anybody who's listening. Two factor and multi factor are fairly interchangeable. Multi being well, maybe you've got three even. But what does it do? Um, you know, you're going to use multi factor authentication or two factor authentication to secure different resources, right? So a common use of multi factor authentication is to secure your email. So when you go to log into your email, for instance, you put in your username and your password, and then maybe you get a text message back to your phone that says, hey, uh, put this code in, and that's your second factor. And the reason why that's an additional factor is the first one is something you know, right? You know your username and you know your password. So something you know is your first factor. The second factor is, well, you have to have your phone to log in now. So now it's not just something you know, it's also something you have, right? Because you have your phone, nobody else has your phone. So it's far more likely that the person who's logging in is you. Because otherwise that person had to learn your password, find it somewhere, steal it, maybe through a leak, but also get access to, to being able to intercept that text message. Now, again, it's not impossible for people to do that, but it's again, far less likely that they're going to have they're going to be able to, to to do both than just the the first one. As you were saying that, it kind of makes me think of uh, like a door. You know, when you shut a door, it has a latch, um, and that that provides some security. Um, but you know, once someone turns that latch, they can enter the door. But if you if you have a lock on the door in addition to the latch, that's a that's like your second factor or another factor, multi factor, and that provides more security. Is that yeah. Is that somewhat accurate? We're trying to increase the hurdles you have to go through, right? So it, it can be a little bit of a, a burden on the user because there's these additional hurdles. But what we're really trying to do is increase the hurdles for uh, a malicious actor who is trying to pretend to be you, right? It's it's very easy to steal somebody's password. It's also very easy to guess somebody's password if the person who who's made this password wasn't using good practices. They're using something that was like easy. <laughs> password. <laughs> yeah, password. Any one, password two, with the word password in it 
don't do that, right? So maybe they've got like a small, <laughs> you know, they thought they were being clever and they capitalized the P and they added a one at the end, you know, or like a dollar sign. And they're like, ah, nobody will ever guess that. Well, that that everybody knows that one. That's going to be one of the first ones they try, right? And you got to remember too that guessing passwords isn't something that somebody sitting down at, at a desk like trying to do. There's automated ways of doing that and they can run through thousands of password attempts you know tries to 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 get into these services in some some instances and so it's really easy if you got a weak password but it's harder to have this second factor now i want to say this the text message isn't the best second factor um you know if if the only option you have available is receiving a text message then do it it's better than not having it in my opinion although i know that there are some people who debate that but i i think it is better to have that than nothing else even better than the, the text message is if you can have an authenticator app. So like TOTP is the acronym uh, for the protocol that's used for those applications. But it's it's that little app that you have that you then click like Google Authenticator or Microsoft Authenticator. Um, uh, who else has? Duo is a really popular one that's out there that I think is own, it's owned by Cisco. Uh, another one would be like LastPass has their own authenticator. There's many. That you can use but having that second factor as an app where you either get a push notification to your phone not a text message but a push notification or you actually have to read the code that's in the app and type that in that's way better than the text message and the reason for that is is there is there is an exploit out there to uh intercept that text message it's highly unlikely somebody's going to use it against uh your average user but it's possible if you've got something of interest to somebody, if you've got cryptocurrency, um, you know, or some sort of information, you're an important person in an organization that you may become an actual target. And at that point, what they can do is they can do a number port and port your phone number out to their phone and then do the second factor and they get the text message instead of you. And then they can log in. And so that's that's not the preferred route. I would say use the app instead. OK, that's good info. Um, also now I know I need to change all my passwords, capital P password, password one, two, three yeah, dollar sign doesn't work. It's spent. So, so I'm going to do that right after this podcast. Um, so now question, sure. Um, obviously this is, this is important. So businesses, is this something that, that you would recommend for, for all businesses to do? Yeah. Hey, this is hands down the most important step you can take towards securing your organization outside of just putting a password in place to begin with. So if you don't have a password, if you don't have a single factor of authentication, hey, let's do that uh, and named accounts and things like that in your organization. So that means that you're not sharing logins, right? A login for you and a login for me and different passwords. Do that first. But then right after that, uh, two-factor authentication or multi-factor authentication, huge benefit to it. It's not a silver bullet. It doesn't fix every problem, but it's an enormous benefit. And everybody should be using it everywhere they possibly can. And not just businesses. I mean, I've had this conversation with my friends. I've had this conversation with my parents. Use multi-factor authentication everywhere that it's available. And if you have services where it's not available, petition them to make it available. It's an enormous step forward in our security. It's a minor inconvenience, but the truth is, we all have we all have smartphones now. I mean, everybody has a smartphone, oh, nearly, right? And if you don't have a smartphone, if you have a phone that receives text messages, you can still use that text message option if they make it available. It's better than nothing, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, use it. It's free in a lot of cases. I want to point this out too. If you have Microsoft 365. This is not something you have to pay for. It's just a feature you have to turn on inside the software. Now, you might have to spend time getting all your users set up. And if you have an a, a IT support company or like a managed uh, IT support company, uh, like an MSP like SimpWorks, there might be some labor hours involved in getting that project uh, rolled out to all of your end users. But the actual like recurring costs, there are, there are no monthly recurring costs for Microsoft 365 to have. Um, two-factor authentication. Now, if you want to go beyond that and add multi-factor authentication to your domain, which I think you should, and to your VPN, now you, you're, you're going to be looking at a third-party service like Duo, for instance. That's the one we use uh, and recommend. We've also used Passly in the past. There's a couple different ones out there that you can pay for. Those 
uh, will have a cost associated with them, but they're also far more advanced. And you get there's a lot that comes along with that, a lot more features and control that you have by going with that third party, and a lot more things that you can um, you can protect. You can protect networking equipment, virtual private networks, your domains, your actual login to your computer itself. There's a lot that comes with that. Um, and and this might be kind of redundant, but just to kind of clarify it, mm-hmm. if someone says well you know i have a super secure password sure um is there actually i guess you can look at two sides of this someone could say i have a super secure password how important is M- mfa for me um is it more secure than that password or you could say someone might say um well i'll keep password 123 now since i have uh mfa at, uh, in addition to that well, right. What would you say to, to either of those well, comments? So, you know, security works in layers. So you want to have effective layers of security to protect you, not just one effective layer. So if you've got a bad password, it's not helping you at all. So have a good password. Have a password that's over 12 characters, preferably. It doesn't need to actually be... Um, you know, something you change all the time, either the new NIST standards, like the old way of doing things, you've got to change your password constantly. You can keep a good password for a long time, especially if you have multi-factor authentication. So I would recommend have like a 12 character password, something you can remember. So you don't have to write it down. So make it, you know, make it a phrase. Uh, You can put special characters in there. That's fine. Numbers are fine. A lot of passwords still require those things. That's okay if that's the requirement. Make it something you can remember. You don't have to write down. You don't need to change it that often. Instead, put uh, multi-factor authentication in place. So the three most popular ways for authentication would be something you know, which would be like your username and password because you know that other people shouldn't. Uh, something you have, so let's say your cell phone, you've got maybe a, you get a text message to your cell phone or you have an authenticator app that you open up to put a little code into the website or you get a push notification. And the third thing is something you are. So a uh, fingerprint scan, right? A retinal scan or a face scan. These would be you know something you are. Uh, and if you can produce something you know, something you have, something you are, The likelihood that you are you and it's you trying to access these resources is very high. It would be very difficult for somebody who is a hacker or a criminal of some sort to possess all three things at the same time and present as you. Another factor of authentication would be that somebody else is actually vouching for you, for instance. But that's not as common when it comes to this specific topic of trying to actually log into different types of software. Gotcha. Okay. So that actually, when you're talking about something you are, it reminds me of the uh, CAPTCHA that you always see that you have to prove that you are a human, right? You have to look at, you know, which those things always make me laugh because they say, identify the taxi and then they just have random yellow cars that aren't actually taxis. Um, But (laughs) <laughs> yeah well my listen does it give you as much stress as it gives me when they're like click on like the intersection and you've got you know the intersection but there's like a yeah. chunk that just gets into one little square and you know it's there but you know the computer yeah. doesn't know it's there yeah. that just gives me i look at that all the time and i go i should be clicking that but if i click it it's actually gonna think oh, yeah well, i i have uh i have a i have a problem just, with 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 captcha captcha let's talk Let's <laughs> so yeah. So I would say with capture, it, it's similar, right? Capture is prove that you're a sentient being, or probably a sentient being, but not quite the same as not quite the same as something you are. Because again, it doesn't mean that the capture doesn't mean that you are you. It means that whoever is doing this is probably mm-hmm. human, <clears throat> but is a you, and that's why it's a little bit different than a capture. Um, but you get the right idea, right? These extra factors, these extra levels of authenticating who is, you know, who's being, who, who is this program or, or resource like interacting with. Okay. So, so MFA then, would you say that's more secure because someone might say, well, I have a super secure password. It's 900 characters long or whatever it is. Um, 
I don't, uh, maybe I don't need MFA. Or on the other hand, someone might say, um, okay, I have MFA. Um, so I'll keep my password at capital P password one, two, three. What, what right. would you say to those comments? If you are a business owner or somebody in charge of making this decision and you are not implementing multi-factor authentication, you're making a mistake. That's how seriously I view this. It, it, you are making a huge mistake in your company and you might even be being negligent because it's so easy. So don't, so use it. So yes, use multi-factor authentication. It is not a silver bullet. It does not solve every problem, but there is no single choice that you can make or a single change that you can make in your organization that will improve your security more than multi-factor authentication in most cases. So <laughs> let's, let's do our, our normal wrap up, Travis. Uh, let's make it simple. 30 seconds or less. What is MFA? It's multi-factor authentication. It's using multiple ways to prove you are who you say you are. Something you know, your password, something you have, your phone, something you are, like a facial, like a retinal scan or a face scan or a thumbprint. That's what it is. And it's the most important single step you can make in your private life and in your company to add security to your environment. And it's super low cost and you, you need to start doing it. And if you're not doing it, it's a mistake.